Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here today to be addressing this August gathering. My subject today is the far reaching transformation of aviation brought in by helicopters. I'll keep my talk a non technical one, keeping it very simple and avoiding all technical aviation jargon. I embarked on my exciting career 50 years ago when I joined the National Defense Academy. And what a roller coaster of a ride it has been. In the last 15 years, I was in civil aviation, flying helicopters of Juhu. Prior to that, I was in the Army for 30 long years. Besides soldiering and flying, I was into adventure activities. I led a lot of teams in various adventure disciplines, such as windsurfing in the Andamans and Nicobar Islands, again from Lakshadweep Islands to the mainland, and on Somurari, a lake at 15,000 feet in Ladakh. Whitewater rafting and kayaking on five rivers, hang gliding and mountaineering. Additionally, I am into long distance solo cycling. The last one that I did was in Europe, crossing seven countries, 3,000 kilometers. And that's where I lost five kgs. Uh, notwithstanding, with my 11,000 hours of flying and 35,000 landings, helicopter flying has been my ultimate passion. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've had to hang my flying boots when I turned 65. There is no commercial flying permitted by law after that age. Igor Sikorsky, the visionary and the man who built the first practical helicopter, very aptly summed it up and said, the helicopter is the most versatile machine ever in invented by humans. It fulfills the mankind's desire of the magic carpet and the flying horse. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I earned my <coughs> wings 40 years ago. Yes, you have to earn your wings by the dint of your hard work and unwavering dedication. Having done that, I was able to identify with the popular aviation acronym called CAGE, which stands for Challenge, Addiction, Glamour, and Excitement. No two days in the life of a pilot are the same. Every sortie that he undertakes is a different one and a challenging one. Flying, especially helicopters, is extremely addictive. And the distinctive uniform, predominantly white and blue, with the gold bars on your shoulder, gives it a dash of glamour. And overall, it is exciting to be in the air, to be free like a bird, and enjoy those superb views. American astronaut Sunil, uh, Sunita Williams, who herself was a helicopter pilot, claimed that the best view of the Earth is from the helicopter, and it can only be understated by a view from outer space. In the annals of aviation, helicopters represent a marvel of innovation and perseverance. It was in the 15th century when Leonardo da Vinci a painter, a polymath, biologist, architect, and a writer who drew the first sketches of the practical helicopter. It was only after 500 long years that inspired scientists and engineers with a lot of experimentation could finally invent the complex machine helicopter. 
14th September 1939 was a momentous day in aviation when Igor Sikorsky took to the skies in his VS-300 helicopter to demonstrate various maneuvers and a sustained flight. Since then, the helicopter, or if you prefer to call it a chopper, a whirly bird, egg beater, copter, or simply a halo or a heli, has played a transformational role in modern aviation, be it civil or the military arena. Helicopters are unique and indispensable in a large number of domains. Search and rescue, disaster relief, aerial photography, inter and intra-city mobility, firefighting, combating crime and tourism, and not to forget access to remote and mountainous areas, to name a few. But there is one particular sector or field where helicopters have had an exclusive domain and they played a prominent role or a pivotal role and that's offshore oil drilling. Notably in the North Sea, the Gulf of Mexico and our own Bombay High. As a matter of fact, Bombay High, which is about 250 kilometers off the coast of Mumbai, can be reached by a long and arduous 8 to 10 hours boat ride. Against that, it's just about 45 minutes by a helicopter and results in tremendous amount of comfort, safety and efficiency. I cherish my experience of a decade and a half in offshore flying. My typical 10-hour day, of which about 5 to 7 hours was in the air, was essentially firing crews and supplies from onshore bases to the various offshore platforms. And from those platforms onward to other rigs, boats, and well-led decks all day long. Often it ended in an overnight stay in those platforms out at sea. Unpredictable weather, strong winds, poor visibility, long flights over the sea at low levels, weight restrictions and landing on small decks, often moving and with lots of obstructions around, made each day a different one. And then there was night flying, when the bright lights of the early deck contrasted with the pitch black of the ocean, creating a potentially dangerous black hole effect during takeoff. It is a well-documented fact that takeoffs and landings are the most crucial stages of a flight. And of course, the most stressful for the pilot. On an average, an aeroplane pilot makes two to four and a max six landings in a day, whereas an offshore pilot makes an incredible 30 to 50 landings in a day onto small decks, often on moving boats and ships, which are rolling, pitching, and heaving, especially during monsoons. It requires nerves of steel. As a matter of fact, keeping the stress factor in mind, a maximum of 60 such landings are permitted in a day by the aviation regulator, DGCA. The armed forces is yet another strategic department wherein helicopters are indispensable. As aviation itself was in its nascent stage, no helicopters worth their name were used in the First and the Second World Wars. The first of the helicopters made their appearance on the battlefield only in the 50s during the Korean War. 20 years later, in the 70s, 
in the Vietnamese war, they were being used en masse. Subsequently, innovations and developments led to the emergence of a new fighting machine called the attack helicopter. Later on, advancement in navigation, night vision missions and uh, systems increased the lethality of these machines. As on date, deemed as a force multiplier, no more is possible without helicopters. Yet another interesting difference between an aeroplane and a helicopter is the takeoff. Aeroplanes take off with a nose up attitude, whereas helicopters initiate their forward flight with a nose down attitude. There is a whole lot of difference in the controls of an aeroplane and a helicopter. Primarily controls in a helicopter being the collective, cyclic and the rudders. These are independent controls, but eventually their outputs are fed into the mixing unit where thereafter they are synchronous in their actions. For instance, if you change the collective pitch, it will have a corresponding effect and a proportional effect on the controls of the cyclic and the rudder and eventually affecting the stability of the machine. This is most pronounced when close to ground in a hover. As a matter of fact, trainee pilots find it extremely challenging to be able to control the aircraft close to the ground in a hover. They are unable to maintain the ground position even if the helipad was large, say 50 feet by 50 feet. It's later with experience that it's no big deal to be landing on a small deck, say 8 feet by 8 feet which is being done often by offshore pilots. Simulators are excellent training devices, both for navigation as well as learning flying techniques. If you ever see or witness a simulator in operation, you'll be astounded to see the advancement and the sophistication of the machine because it gives you a real life experience of flying without ever leaving terra firma. No wonder these machines frequently cost more than the aircraft itself. But then they provide you with a safe and an affordable training material wherein you can get familiar with the aircraft, fly in simulated weather conditions and most important you can practice your critical emergencies like engine fire or engine failure, which you will not be able to do in actual flight. Mobility within cities or between cities is all about interconnectivity, accessibility, safety and efficiency. But unfortunately, the mobility systems that we have in almost all cities are stretched to their limits and they seem to be getting dysfunctional. This is where helicopters can step in and provide the much needed relief. A city called Sao Paulo in Brazil has 400 helicopters, more than 400 helicopters, which is much more than the 250 that we have in our own country. With 160 helipads, both on ground and on rooftops, a maximum of about 1,200 to 1,400 flights are launched every day. And this is how they've overcome their problems of mobility within cities. With cutting edge technology, like artificial intelligence, digitalization, use of alternative fuels, electric batteries, and ultralight materials, helicopters are now entering a different and a new era, and will soon be much more economically 
useful and environmentally friendly. It will cost much lesser, lesser to operate them and they will become much more affordable. The pace of transmission, transformation in aviation has been phenomenal. It took a long 500 years from the first sketch to the first practical helicopter and just about eight decades from the first helicopter to deploying a helicopter on a different planet, planet Mars. I conclude by saying all of us are pilots, pilots of our own lives. I wish you all the best and may you pilot your life to success. Happy landings and thank you.